Right. Uh, hello again. Um, this is a paper that I prepared together with Maria Dąbrowska Lorenz and Przemysław Skorczyński and Anna Zielińska from the Motor Transport Institute. I represent the Technology and Natural University of Bydgoszcz. Um, sorry, oh, yes. but oh, yeah, okay. I, I can change the slides now. So here is the plan of my presentation. The following topics, as you can see them listed, but the main thing is choosing the devices and measures to reduce. Um, the risks for cyclists and also selection of investments and devices to reduce uh, cycling risks and then implementation and finally there will be a summary. Next please. Well, cycling safety is one of the most important problems of today's road safety, and that's because cycling is increasing, and now with the pandemic, cycling has been increasing dynamically, both in urban and non-urban areas. This is why um, cycling safety management is a very important topic. Plus, it's been increasingly important over the recent months. The aim of the paper is to present procedures for reducing um, cycling risks. The way we worked was that we carried out a detailed review of the literature and uh, we named the procedures for reducing cycling hazards. Our work was based on a publication um, that's guidelines for the organization of safe cycling handbook. That's from 2018. And uh, another proposal from 2018 listing new proposals. So both proposals were prepared for the Ministry of Infrastructure and the National Road Safety Council. We conducted a thorough review of the literature for the purposes of this work. And what it shows is that between the second and the third decades of the 21st century, we have a whole range of solutions. And many of them, or the majority of them, have to do with how traffic is organized and managed. Well, this has nothing to do with cycling management um, or with cycling infrastructure. So, um, choice of devices and activities. And please note, first of all, it's how important it is to diagnose safety of cycling. With a diagnosis, um, we can build on that and, and work towards improving that safety. The specificity of cycling infrastructure means that there are a number of factors that have to be included, whether it's urban um, or transport factors. It's also really important to meet the direct needs of cyclists which goes back to um, how cyclists behave. We developed criteria 
kształtowania infrastruktury rowerowej cycling infrastructure in the context of road safety to do that we used um, template models from abroad especially um, dutch models and dutch solutions so we recommended segregation of bicycles from other vehicles uh, we cover speed limits and uh, this is also in reference to daily traffic volumes we have a variety of solutions as you can see um, 30 kilometers per hour is uh, one of the ranges with the traffic at 2,500 vehicles and then speed uh, 50 kilometers and the solutions we propose for zones below 30 kilometers well that means bicycles using mixed traffic and uh, what's called light infrastructure. So that means contraflow lanes or specific special uh, cycle lanes or um, lanes um, as part of a single uh, of one-way roads so for 30 to 50 kilometers and traffic at 2500 vehicles um, in this range you have to be really careful with designing cycle solutions so that has to take account of the specific road and anything about 50 kilometers per hour then no matter what the traffic volume is um, um, bicycles have to be moved away from the carriageway something really important what the table doesn't include is having a shared road for pedestrians and cyclists what we suggest is to use Dutch examples and models and we don't recommend a shared road for pedestrians and bicycles if it's more than 10 bicycles or pedestrians per hour and traffic volume um, below 10,000 vehicles per day. Next one, please. So measures to reduce um, cycling hazards and uh, hazards for other road users. We've divided those hazards into four groups. Well, uh, the first area is spatial planning. Next is uh, traffic organization and management. Next, please. One of the other groups of activities that we are uh, suggesting is infrastructure activities, that's cycling infrastructure activities, and group four is education and promotion. Um, international and uh, domestic experience shows that uh, we can have desired effects only if it's part of a system and if it involves the cooperation of different stakeholders because uh, we usually work with cyclists when only when they are introduced into existing roads or streets uh, working out ways to improve their safety so we have to look at all the aspects plus um, cars are still allowed to be there so we uh, we have to combine all of these requirements so how do we um, select activities and devices to reduce cycling risks and the risks to other road users so here's our proposal 
Under the procedure we're proposing, um, the activities and devices uh, can only be selected in a comprehensive approach. This has to include planning and design. The model is split into three stages. Number one, diagnosis and analysis of baseline data. Stage two, it's planning, and stage three, it's implementation and monitoring. So regarding um, diagnosis, what's uh, really important here is to analyze this in a detailed and reliable way, which means having a lot of information to work from. As a result, whatever we do as a, uh, as a consequence of this will be more effective. Next is planning. That means we have to select areas for intervention where we have to take into account um, the need to reduce risks and to improve the effectiveness of the actions. Uh, we have to have public consultation and uh, then we um, have to consult bicycle user groups and then um, select the measures and have an implementation plan. In the next stage, when it comes to implementation and monitoring, we also have to um, evaluate the work we've done. If that evaluation is positive, then um, hopefully the cyclists will be able to um, enjoy the solutions. But it's just one thing. It doesn't stop at implementation. We have to keep monitoring um, the safety performance of the new solutions. And we have to understand the relations between cycling hazards and road traffic hazards. But it may very well be that the assessment uh, will yield a negative result, and that means having to go back to planning and um, we and, and having to repeat the procedure. We think um, the, the work to be done um, should reflect the level of road safety management. Anything strategic should be tackled at the central level, anything tactical should be tackled at the regional level, and operations should be tackled by the local level. Because of the level of uh, taking the decisions and then carrying out the work, well, there are different levels. Well, first of all, it's just strategic level. At this level, we have to have the regulations in place and the uh, and secondary legislation, for example, land use um, legislation. Um, monitoring must also be ensured. Um, we need to keep track of the results and how this affects vulnerable road users. At the regional level, it's technical activities. There is a slight difference compared to the strategic level. There should be um, a regular assessment of cyclist safety. Uh, the objectives and actions should be verified. And any investment and organizational activities must be given um, proper priority in the strategy papers of the region. Uh, and those would be regional development strategies and regional strategic transport programs. 
We also have to have the uh, technical and financial support at this level. Next. Um, these are the activities we will we will be coming um, um, across. So, doing periodical assessments of uh, traffic safety, uh, creating plans and programs for cycling, providing financial support for civic initiatives. These slides will explain how we can present um, the condition of cycling safety in the regions. Implementation and monitoring of selected actions to reduce the risk of collisions and accidents involving cyclists. The scope of monitoring should be at each stage to, uh, understanding the safety situation. We should have public consultation and carry, it's, it's about carrying out a review of our action plans and the results of a cyclist safety monitoring programs and the ass and assessments of the interventions are really key um, to achieving um, effective uh, solutions. Plus, we want to ensure an active participation and um, efforts to improve cyclist safety. And finally, can I just highlight some important uh, issues? So cycling safety is really important, especially now that um, there are more and more cyclists, cyclists riding on roads that are used by motor vehicles. That's one thing, but also um, roads that are shared by cyclists and pedestrians, and obviously the risk is higher for pedestrians. For the programs to be implemented, we have to follow specific methodologies to uh, take account of a number of factors that I've already listed. We know that building a cycle uh, or cycling infrastructure is not the only way to keep this group safe, and especially when you're dealing uh, with the shortage of funds, this is really critical. And finally, I would like to give you this quote from the book Street Fight, How to Reclaim the City for the People. This is by Sadiq Khan and Solomonov, who argue that designing a way that ensures the safety of cyclists guarantees greater diversity in the functioning of the street, which becomes friendlier for all users because people are more visible on it and their behaviors more predictable. So that's already happening today in Polish cities. I'm almost finished, where we can see cycling infrastructure developing quite efficiently. Thank you.